Hey guys, I don't have too much to talk about today, but I'll try to keep it mostly constrained to good news. And you can check out all those and the stories and all that in the timestamps that you can see just to my, well, it, it's my right, but your left. Now, the good news is that NVIDIA's GeForce Now game streaming service has come out of beta. As part of that release from beta, there are currently two subscription tiers, a free version and a paid version. Regardless of which one you decide to go with, though, you will be able to play a game that is uh, available to said service. A few of the games that I tried to play earlier when I was investigating this in order to give you a good story included Yakuza Kiwami, Yakuza 0, Aseto Corza, a driving game, and The Witcher 3. However, when even trying to look up the number of games available, while I couldn't find a definite number, I did see just by putting in, just by pressing separate keys on the keyboard, that there were a lot more than the 22 games that Stadia currently has available. And not only that, but because of the linking that, that is available between NVIDIA's GeForce Now and the Steam Store, you have access to much more. So assuming that you've already purchased it on Steam, you don't have to you don't have to buy the license again through Nvidia using whatever service or store or marketplace that they have set up. Assuming they even have one set up at this point. But as I said, you'll be able to play a game that is available to said service. Now the different the primary difference between the free version and the paid version is that with the free version you are limited to one hour. I believe that's per day. Yeah, you are limited to one hour with the free version as opposed to unlimited playtime with the paid version. Another major difference between GeForce Now and Google Stadia is that NVIDIA's is only going to cost you $5 a month. Oh, and one more thing. The, the controller that you can use in, is, uh, well, it's primarily going to be compatible with the PlayStation 4 controller. Oh, let me grab one. Uh, you might recognize it. It looks like this. But it is also going to be available with a number of other controllers, including, but not limited, to, 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 yeah. But e even their own controllers are only going to cost you 60 as opposed to the 70 that you would have spent for Google's, Google's controller. Let me grab it for you. Man, a lot of running around today. Did you see it? Yeah, it looks like this. It's honestly a bit of a letdown that Google tried to launch a half-baked product the way they did. Didn't even get it out of the beta phase before they launched it to us. But that is something that they are actually trying to rectify, thankfully, as they are planning on working out a deal with Activision to try to... Well, Activision wants to move all of its game streaming services through Google and YouTube. So hopefully there, there might actually be some movement there as far as new games to the service, even though they haven't even delivered on one of their other promises. So personally, I think that the launch of NVIDIA service is a nail in the coffin when it comes to Stadia. And at this point, just say just say bye-bye, and we're probably never going to see it again past, uh, uh, let's see, what month are we in February? Uh, they're probably never going to speak about it again after August. Give it six more months, and we'll all be forced to forget about it. Even more good news. Controller-free hand tracking just got improved on the Oculus Quest. So now, instead of having to toggle it back and forth and back and forth, 
Now, so long as you have it turned on, all you have to do is put down your your Quest controllers, and then it'll just track your hands automatically. Right now, though, there isn't a whole lot that you can do with the controller-free hand tracking in the Quest because there, there aren't a lot of apps that support it. But this very update that is still just in the experimental stages is something that we can see, hopefully, moving forward with a lot of the other headsets on the market. And this is the direction that I personally would like to see VR go. I, I want us to be able to, well, for, for lack of a better analogy, I, I want us to be able to feel and, and touch everything in virtual reality and just go to a world of our choosing. Sort of like, uh, well, like I said, for lack of a better analogy, sword art online. Uh, call me weeb all you want. I don't. I don't care. Deep down, I know I am. But the the fact remains, controller free hand tracking. It's the future. I love it, and hopefully you do too. So as far as Sony VR goes, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that Iron Man VR, although it is expected to be a PlayStation exclusive when it launches in May, could potentially be hitting other. VR headsets as well. The part of what part of what leads to this conclusion is the fact that two very big titles that were PlayStation exclusives at the time have already or are in the process of being ported to other consoles as well. Those titles include Horizon Zero Dawn and Death Stranding. Death Strandings is still in progress, however, it is expected to port later on this year. While there hasn't been a whole lot of rumble in that direction regarding Iron Man VR, that possibility is still on the table. And the, the bad news that comes from Sony is that... Uh, one of their virtual reality studios supposedly claiming AAA VR titles, well, not only have they not personally released any titles since they were opened back in 2015, but Sony has decided to pull the plug on that studio for that. Likely because they haven't made any of those big titles, and they are going to try to make the move to save as much money as they can as they try to push for the launch of PlayStation VR as it launches either this year or next. Hopefully, we're able to see some kind of first party titles within the next year in some fashion. Personally, I don't really care how, so long as we actually do get first-party titles in PlayStation VR. Because there, there hasn't been a whole lot that... Well, it, it's a pretty scarce ecosystem right now. And hopefully, well, something happens. Okay, one last piece of good news. Uh, it's been confirmed now from Rockstar's most recent tax return that uh, we are going to be getting GTA 6. So far, it's just been rumored up to this point. But it's nice to see a little bit of confirmation. And out of not, not some Redditor or some random tweet, but through a verifiable source. That, well, it, it's a, illegal to lie. What, what would you call it? Perjury? Uh, I'm going to just tell you about the usual stuff. Um, if you want to support me, blah, 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 Facebook, blah, 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 YouTube, blah, 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 subscribe, blah, 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 Humble Bundle, uh, blah, 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 Charity, blah, 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 Win-Win, you, you know, that whole deal. Okay, ta-ta!